Is it possible to live with rainwater as your main source of water? This is a question I got frequently and the answer is yes. It just depends how you use your water. Okay. So. Hello. Hi. Hi. Yet it's been a while. It's been a while. As some of you know, the cabin here works 100% with the rainwater as the main source of water. So in the last years, I've worked on a system to harvest the rain in order to storage it somewhere, which is in my back shed. And I thought it would be cool to like show you all what my setup looks like. For sure, my setup, it's made for my place. Like I bet there's like 100 ways to do it. This is the way I've done it here for myself. Everyone have a different setup, which is cool. And, uh, but yeah, it's just like, I wanted to show like how I did my setup because like my old setup was not exactly like this and now it's like the setup that works for me here so uh, here i am with the uh, my uh, rainwater harvesting system so my system here it's quite simple i just use the roof to uh, catch the rain and then the rain go in the gutter and you can see on top of the gutter, there's some gutter guard. This is just like a piece of metal with holes in it. You can buy that at like any hardware store. Like basically this uh, catch like the bigger debris, like leaf and like pine needles or whatever kind of like debris you're gonna have. And then it drip into the second filter. The second filter is built with a T-section of gutter that I cap at the end and I just use like a scrap piece of screen door. And then like, as you can see, like this part is removable. So it's easy to clean. And it's also outside the shed. And the reason why it's outside the shed is like one day there's been a big storm and the debris from the gutter still got through like the second filter and it plugged it and the filter was inside the house. So there was a big uh, water mess on the ground. Uh, so that's why now I put it outside is because if this filter get plugged by the breeze, then it's gonna just overflow outside the cabin on the ground. That's it. He also, even if it's like outside this, I leave it all year long and during winter it doesn't freeze. So it's good. I use like some pipe, it's a two and a half inch all the way up to the tank. After that, you can see there's um, the big tank. This tank is around 6,000 liters and it's around uh, $4,000. And then like you got the overflow. So if the tank get too full, then it just literally drip outside. So there's no damage. Uh, this tank have an under layer. It's uh, I just use a piece of vapor barrier because sometimes there's like condensation on the the tank and that could make your floor rot if it was directly on the floor. So that's why I've used this as a protection. The way I use the water from the tank, uh, it's basically like I put like a three quarter PEX pipe, and then here as you can see, I have like a 12 volt uh, water pump to uh, assure like a good amount of pressure in the system. It's a sure flow, it's around like uh, 120 Canadian dollar. And seriously, don't cheat on that because like there's some brand that are like um, cheaper, like 50 bucks and I, I tried those, I blew two of those and then I was like, never again I'm gonna use that Chinese piece of crap that I just bought for like 40 50 bucks because like the water pump is literally like the heart of your water system if you want to have like some pressure so don't go cheap and just get like a good sure flow and it's funny because like I thought I would have some problems so I bought like three of those the last time I bought the pump and since I bought the first one the first one still work and it's been like around like two years and we use it every day so that's the thing okay below after that you can see like i did the bypass on the system so if the pump blow uh, my girlfriend she's not too much comfortable with the uh, plumbing so like she can just close the first two valves next to the pump and use the bypass by turning it on this is going to give water in the cabin without the pressure of the pump but still it's better than nothing uh, after that like how do i keep the shed warm during winter is literally i, I put this uh, infinity duct fan and uh, I can control it from inside the cabin, which is fun with this small panel. I can see like what, how cold is the shed, etc. with like those uh, little settings there and like the humidity on top, etc. So the fan brings the warm air from the cabin. And then for the circulation, I just did some holes in the wall. Uh, so like there's always like a circulation. 
that brings like warm hair from the cabin and bring like the colder air from the shed in the house so it circulates what i've discovered over the years like it's important to have like a good airflow so what i found is like if i put this fan plus like an another small fan that just like turn air into like the shed then there's practically no condensation which is great it avoid a lot of problem let me tell you so now we are inside the house uh, where like the fan take is air it's also like the output of the water tank and you got the third filter the third filter is a nylon filter uh, you can clean it once in a while as you can see mine is about to be ready to be cleaned and then like I got my pressure balloon which create like a constant flow of water because those pumps are on demand and like I got the small pressure gauge here and so from there it goes into my electric water heater first uh, the reason why I have an electric uh, water heater is because like I have sometimes too much electricity during summer so I just use this electricity to heat the water and then from the electric water heater it's all in series it goes into my propane water heater for example during summer I just close the propane water heater and then I use the electric water heater but during the winter like the, the, the water circulates still through the electric water heater while I use the hot water heater so it's very simple um, it's, it's, this is uh, the John Wood again the first time I bought like some those it's a uh, cheap one on Amazon it's around like two hundred dollar and I blow two of those and again if you're about to buy a machine that you rely on buy something good it's not a sponsor I paid for that machine around a thousand dollar but it's totally worth it what's special with the uh, John Wood is they have like a very cool feature that would have probably saved my uh, my two other machine is there's an um, heating element around the copper coil inside the combustion chamber and then here is uh, the flush valve that I have created so I'm able to drain the whole system if we go travel during the winter because the house is heated only by a wood stove so on every line the cold and the hot there's the flush valve and here it's the system we use to drink the rainwater it's literally plugged on like the pipe of the cold water and it's an aqua system it's a uv lamp with a filter and i've tested the water and it's uh, potable so uh, that's what we use now basically we don't have to go in the village to pick up some water we just drink the rainwater and uh, we got clean water so for the piping in the cabin it's regular uh, one inch pecs and then it goes in the kitchen the bathroom shower toilet and you just pipe that uh, like a regular house and then uh, where's this water all going and it's going in the septic that i've installed last summer um, it's around like 250 feet down the mountain and uh, it's basically a septic tank connected to a nico flow on top of a fdi which is like a pool kind of there's like a membrane and because we're all on rock here so it get like uh, filtered and there's like a station of recirculation anyway that's a very big and expensive setup but that's about it for the rain uh, water harvesting system and uh, how we get rid of the water the whole cost of my system without the septic I would say that it's around like a seven thousand dollar piping included uh, for the septic that's uh, another story if you have any question, don't be shy and ask it in the comment below.